definitely wakes you up in the morning. And this is one of my favorite, um, I guess you call it a sports watch. I hesitate to call it a diver's watch, um, even though it looks like a diver's watch, but it wouldn't be very good as a diver's watch. Uh, one of the reasons is um, it's only 100 meters water resistant, so you wouldn't really want to be taking it too deep. And the other thing is the, the crown on the left hand side, it's not a screw down crown. Uh, this controls the inner rotating bezel. So that's the other problem with the, the watch being a diver's watch. Uh, you can rotate it, but the problem is it rotates in both directions. And uh, the other problem is it moves by itself. Uh, when it's on your wrist, the bottom of it will catch uh, your wrist and it, it will move. And when I first got the watch, I was constantly uh, moving this back to 12 because it just kept moving. And it was a real irritation for me. Uh, but now some 18 years later, um, I just don't bother. I'm like, ah, so what, it's moved. Uh, so um, that's kind of faded away um, in the back uh, since I've owned this watch. But I, I do really like the watch. Even though I like this watch, there are a few things which really uh, annoy me, which I think they should have done a lot better uh, job. The crown being one. Um, I don't understand why they didn't uh, have a screw down crown. Um, it would have made the watch a lot better. You, there would have been two, maybe 300 meters water resistant. It's, it's a very unusual looking watch. Uh, JLC at that time were, I think, trying to go off in a different direction. Uh, a lot of their watches are quite classic looking. Uh, their most famous ones are, I think, the Reverso. Everyone knows the uh, JLC Reverso. So I think they were trying a new direction. And I don't think it was a very popular case. Um, from what I can see, it didn't sell very well, especially um, uh, this one. Uh, and I'm quite glad about that. I like the fact there's not many of these around. I like to be in a, in a kind of a, a club where there's not many of these watches around. Uh, it's just one of those things that I like. I like watches which are a bit unusual looking. And definitely with the, the two crowns on this side, it is very strange looking to, to most people who are not really into the watches and even people who are into the watches. So you've got these two crown guards stroke uh, crown locks. Uh, so you've got the top one, which um, which controls the the alarm function, and then you have the bottom one, which uh, controls the, uh, the the time, date, and your all your other functions. So in order to unlock it, you simply just twist. It's as simple as that. So you just simply twist it open or twist it closed. So you have the the red for open, the white for locked. Uh, simple. So when you look at it, if, if you see the red, you know it's open. And uh, when you see both the white, um, you can see that it is locked. I like that. Even though it's a very gimmicky thing, it's very over-engineered. Um, the, me the mechanics in there, I think, are not necessary, considering you have a, a crown on this side, which you can't lock. So the, by locking these two, you, yeah, you're going to make sure that no water is going to come in through these. But then it would just flood through there if you went deep enough in the water. So it's a very gimmicky thing. And I'm not normally into gimmicky watches, but I like that. And one of the things I did like about it, the fact that um, when I want to do it, I don't have to unscrew it. Um, it's it's a bit of a pain. I'm surprised they didn't put one on this side as well. Uh, it would have just made it so much better. They could have uh, had a depth rating of a much higher depth. Really, I don't know why they didn't put it there. Maybe it's the fact that it would have looked very unsightly, very chunky, but it would have been nice to have, I, I would have preferred it. Uh, so the, the top crown, uh, when you unlock it, that controls the alarm function. So you, you set the alarm by simply pulling out the crown and then twisting, and then that sets the clock uh, for, the, for the alarm. Now the problem with the alarm is that it's not a 20, it, it doesn't count up in 24 hours, it counts up in 12 hours. So that's a bit of a pain because if you set the alarm, say seven o'clock in the morning to go off seven o'clock to wake you up to get up uh, and go to work or whatever else you want to do. Um, it also means that if you wind it after it's, it, the alarm's gone off, it will then go off at uh, 7 p.m. as well. So unless, unless you pull out the crown, so you unlock it, pull out the crown. Now what that does, that turns off the alarm. So you've once you've, to wind it, you, you just unlock it, and then you wind it. You can, don't know if you can hear it winding. So you wind. 
and then you just pull out the crown. It does take a lot of winding, that's not even fully wound. Uh, and then just lock it. And then what that does, it switches off the alarm. But then you've got to go through, if you remember, to switch it back on. So by pressing it down, that switches the alarm on. And then in the morning or whatever time you've set it, it will go off. Now the downside to this alarm is it's not very accurate to set the alarm. So at the moment I've got it set at what four, around about four something. So let's uh, let's say I wanted to set it at um, so seven o'clock. We was I was saying earlier by seven o'clock. So set it at seven o'clock, and it's all ready. But it will not go off exactly at seven o'clock. It will have plus or minus maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, because you've got to really you got to look at it very carefully if you want it exactly at seven and even then it won't go off at exactly seven o'clock and also now it's about to hit uh 12. it doesn't mean it's going to go off at exactly 12. it could go off at 10 past uh 10 seconds past or even 30 seconds past so it's not a very very accurate way of setting your alarm the other thing is it doesn't have a quick set date so quick set date is when you open your crown up you pull out it does have a, a hacking system so but that's it. it it you can't set the date one at a time you have to go round to 12 o'clock uh, and then it will it will clock over to the next day so either you go all the way around or what most people do with a watch like this is they'll they'll go past 12 to about two o'clock then they'll go back to nine o'clock then forward to two and then that you pass the 12 o'clock that turns the uh, the day function over or the date function over and you know, you've got to do that maybe 20 times if um, depending on the time of uh, month you pick up your watch if you're not wearing it constantly now I've been wearing this watch for almost two months now so I've set it at one time that's fine but if I put this down and then don't pick it up and uh, the date is say the the second of whatever month it is and today it stopped at six, I'd have to go all the way around and go back to the second, um, and which is a real pain. That's very annoying, I hate doing that. Uh, sometimes when I did pick it up and I was only gonna wear it for a few days, I just didn't bother even setting the date. I would just think, oh, well, just forget it, just leave it as it is, I don't really, really need to know the date. Now the date window is slightly curved inside, um, you can just see it there. It's very strange. When I first saw that, I thought, oh, that's very strange because it always is normally very flat to it. But I think that's down to uh, the mechanism, the, the movement in the in the watch. Now, the movement is the 918 movement uh, made by JLC. Uh, and it has a 45-hour power reserve. With watches today, that really is nothing. Um, watches nowadays, they'll have like days of power reserves, like three, four, five, seven days worth of power reserves. So I think we've become a, lit, a little bit uh, used to having uh, watches with a lot uh, more power reserve. The watch has uh, 21 millimeter lug sides, which really annoy me. I hated the fact that to, when this watch came out, it came with 21 millimeter uh, lug size. Because of that, there wasn't many companies that made um, straps for 21 millimeters. So you had to actually buy it from JLC if you wanted the strap. Now, when I bought the strap, um, uh, sorry, when I bought the watch, this is the strap it came on. I wore it on this for a little while, uh, but I don't like this strap. It's it just for me. It didn't suit the watch. It comes on a deployment buckle. Uh, it's got a little bit of wear on it, but uh, whenever I buy, I bought this brand new from JLC. Whenever I buy um, a brand new watch, I always get them to throw in an extra strap. So when I want to come to sell the watch, I can give a brand new strap. Or if I, for whatever reason, if that one breaks, and I, I did want to wear it on the strap. Um, it's still sealed after 18 odd years. Um, I hadn't even taken it out of the packet. I, I, that didn't suit it. I preferred this strap. So I got this um, ammo strap uh, custom made for it. I think this ammo strap suits the watch much, much better. Uh, and I, it's been on this strap since since I got it. Um, I haven't bothered changing it. I'm going to leave it on this strap forever, um, I think, until I actually sell this watch. Now, many years ago, I did make a video saying I would never sell this watch. And over the years, I've sort of come to the conclusion that one day I probably will sell the watch. Um, it's not going to be the watch that I'll be wearing on my deathbed. Um, so at one point, I will sell this watch uh, Probably won't be for another maybe another 20 years, could be more, but 
in the meantime, I will wear it as much as I possibly can because um, I've been wearing my other old watches that I've had for many, many years I haven't been watching uh, wearing. Uh, and I do now sort of think, yeah, why am I not wearing these watches? So as soon as I finish this video, the, this watch is going to go back in the safe and um, I'll pick one of my other watches. I'm thinking probably my other JLC Reverso. Um, I'll probably start wearing that one because I haven't worn that for well over a decade as well. So on the back of the watch, um, you can see it has this uh, gold medallion, um, I guess you could call it. Uh, and on, on the back of the watch, you can see it says Master Compressor and um, it's got a thousand hours. Now what they do, uh, JLC, they don't send their watch off to be uh, chronometer certified. Uh, they have their own in-house testing. Now, a lot of people, I'm, I'm not too fussed about chronometer rated watches. I, I don't see the big the big point with them. Um, the watches themselves have a chronometer rated movement, but the, te the watches are not tested with the movement inside. Now, when JLC do their thousand hours, which um, that works out like around about 42 days worth of testing. And they actually test the complete watch, all fitted, all done and dusted. So the, the everything's done. With a chronometer rated watch, what they do is say Breitling, um, they will send them their Breitling movement off to be tested, but not the actual watch. The movement goes off. Then if it's passed, they'll get the, the movement back and they'll put it in the watch. And then that's it, it's done. It's got the chronometer certification. This, they'll test it as it is. And they actually go through a lot more tests as well. Uh, they do a shock resistant test as well. So I, I have dropped this um, just a few days ago, actually. It was dropped not by me, but by a family member when it was on the table and uh, they moved something and it fell off the table. Uh, and I was absolutely furious. It, um, yeah, and it's still running fine. Um, at the moment, it's running fast, uh, but I'd rather have a watch running fast. I've never really... Uh, counted how fast or slow a watch get, uh, is as long as it's not something like 30 seconds plus a day I don't really care it's a mechanical watch you know some people they get all fussed oh my watch is running within two seconds of where it what it what what it should be or and, and they get all you know anal about it I don't care as long as the watch is not losing too much time or getting too much time it's a mechanical watch it's going to be plus or minus depending on how you wear it the temperature it is as well it's fine by me. Um, people always, they're always posting, oh, I've bought a new watch and it's its this seconds or that seconds fast or slow. And I'm super happy with it. Yeah, you knock that watch one time on a wall, it could throw that out straight away. So it makes no difference whatsoever. I don't really care about that. Now the watch is um, 40.5 millimeters uh, in diameter, which it actually feels a lot bigger because of the big crown guard, uh, crowns and crown guards, I, I keep calling crown guards. It actually feels a lot bigger as well. And the other thing, the reason it, it feels a lot bigger is these lugs, uh, they are quite short, but the way they are, if you look at the side profile, they stick out and then they, they, go, they, they fall off very quickly. Most watches, uh, you, when you have um, lugs, they, they sort of taper down gradually. These sort of go straight out and then taper down straight away. Uh, so I like falling off a cliff. That makes uh, them, ha they have short lugs, but they feel a lot bigger than they actually are because they're not tapering down. It fit, they fit my wrist and the way the crowns are, they f it fits my wrist even better because the, the, there's no center crown, which would dig into my wrist. With them being at uh, two o'clock and four o'clock, it just fits so well on my wrist. It's so comfortable uh, on my wrist. That's one of the reasons I like this watch. It looks very strange and very unusual and it fits my wrist really well. So apart from those few things which niggle me, the anti-reflective, the, the, cr uh, the crown here which doesn't lock uh, and this is constantly moving and the quick set date, everything else about this watch I really like and I'm so glad that I, I picked this watch because when I was uh, gonna buy this one, when I did buy this watch, I was actually looking at uh, the other um, uh, a JLC alarm watch, which I believe was called, was it, they called it Amvox. Um, I was very close to actually buying that one because I like the classic look of that one as well. But uh, this was something new. And again, I was like, I, was, I, I wasn't sure if this watch would take off. And I think not a lot of people were. 
Um, and as I said, I like to be in a little bit of a club where not many people buy it. I think the Anvox didn't sell very well as well. Uh, the reason I didn't buy that one was I hated the minute hand. It looks like a, a penis top and I just couldn't get over that. Uh, I just looked at it and I thought, oh, that's horrible. The hands on this, I do like the hands, even though they are quite short. That's another thing which um, just came to mind as well. Um, the minute hand doesn't go all the way to the edge, which is a bit of a, a bugbearer for me as well. But these few things I can forgive the watch because one, it's very comfortable uh, to wear and I just like the watch. You know, some people say they have a watch which they like and they're not quite sure why they like it. They just like it. That's me with this watch, even though it has its uh, points which I don't like. It has more pluses than it has minuses, so I can forgive all the minuses.